crumbling tile bridge uh, tutorial. So, as you can see, it's all crumbly and then it'll break just like that. So here we are, welcome back to the traps tutorial. The only change we've made since the last time, if you've been following the series, but you don't need to follow the series, um, is we've added a step and a little gap here as well. Now today we're going to look at some crumbling paths or a bridge that breaks into little pieces. This one did explosions. We're going to look and see if we can just make it like tiles so you can choose which tiles are going to crumble and destroy so for that we're going to need a new folder called uh, breaking paths and we're going to need a new blueprint actor so bp uh, breaking tile BP breaking tile. There we go. And we're going to open that up. And in here, we're going to add four cubes. Uh, we'll call this tile one. And then we're going to duplicate that, duplicate that, and duplicate that. And each of these cubes needs to be uh, in the shape of a square. I'll just make them like that. And then each of them also needs to just have uh, to just be a bit smaller uh, so they look like tiles. So just like that. So we'll put 0 0.1 on the scale. We've selected all of them and we've got 0 0.1 on the scale. Now they're a little bit off but that is fine. So just like that. Now, if you want to, you can select all of them, come to material and put a material on them like that. That looks quite nice. And then the only other thing that we need to do is we need to add a box collision and we need to make that bigger. So let's make it wider, move over a little bit and then let's make it bigger that way bring it up a little bit just a little bit smaller so that it's actually in there so it is when they're stepping on it and just bring it up so it covers up layer like that there we go right so now that's done we don't need a begin play or anything like that we need a custom event so right click, add custom event. We're going to call this start wobble. And then we're going to need a timeline. So I'm going to add a timeline. We're going to call this wobble time, like hammer time, but not. And we're going to add a track. I'm going to call this wobble track. And by default, we're going to put it at five seconds long. I'm going to add a curve at zero zero so right click add key curve and put this at uh, time five and value one so this is just how quick it goes from here to here okay so it goes up pretty sharpish uh, and there's a reason for that is because we want the wobbles to play uh, pretty sharpish too so i'm going to pull off from here and get set world rotation and we're just going to select tile one and then we're going to get tile two tile three and tile four and we're going to hook all of those into there as well from this wobble track we're going to lerp rotator and we're just going to put it into set world rotation from a we're going to get actor rotation we're going to make a rotator just like that and then from x y and z we're going to get random get float in range 
So from X, Y, and Z, we're going to get random floating range. So it's not a get, it's just random floating range. And we're just going to duplicate that. So control D to duplicate that twice. Put that in there and that in there. So then we're going to put minus five and positive five in the first one, minus four and positive four in the second one, minus three and positive three in the third one. Now, what's this? What is this doing? So this is running our timeline and it's lurping between the values uh, of the actor rotation as its current rotation and the random float in range. So on the X value, it's getting a, it's getting a random value to minus five and five, and it's setting the world rotation and it's doing that every single time it updates. So that's what's going to look like. It's going to wobble for our character. So if we, we can do a begin play here. This is just for testing purposes. We can call start wobble just here. And if I drag this out into the world, click on simulate just there, you'll see that it's wobbling just like that. And then once five seconds are up, it stops. But that's not what we want. We want something else to happen. So this is our wobble. Once it's finished, we want to collapse the bridge. So we're going to get a new custom event, add custom event. I'm going to call this collapse. We're going to get tile one, tile two, tile three, and tile four. And we're going to set collision enabled on those. And we're going to get the box as well. And we're going to call it physics only, no query collision. And then for tiles, we're going to set simulate physics. And we're going to get tile two, tile three, and tile four. Do that and do that and select set simulate physics. And then on finished, we're going to call collapse. So we'll go back to the timeline, get finished, and call collapse. And then if we test this again, I can show you what this looks like. So this should break once it's finished wobbling. There we go. Breaks just like that, which looks quite nice. Now, we don't want it to start just wobbling randomly. We want to add some weight to it. So we're going to trigger it when the player steps on it. So if we go to box, we can right click on component begin overlap. We can check if the actor is equal to the player. So we get player character and get a branch and if they are then we start wobble and if the actor ends overlap so we'll right click on box again get add event end overlap again check it's the player get player character We want to stop the wobble. So we're going to come up to stop in our timeline. I'm going to create a custom event. We'll call it stop wobble. Okay. So then if the player leaves the box, I'm going to call stop wobble. Just like that. So now if the player enters the box, which is encompassing our uh, tile, then we will start the wobble. And if it leaves, then we will stop the wobble. So let's test that. We go to our level. Uh, we'll get rid of our test event on begin play. We'll go back to our level. Right click, play from here. So now it's wobbling. 
you can see that all the camera is shaking and it's fallen and dropped and if I stop and try again so it started to wobble and now we've left it and it stopped and if I go back onto it it remembers the time that we were on it and continues to play from where it left off just like that now you could see the whole screen was shaking just there so we can make it so that that doesn't happen if we go to our third person blueprint we can go to our bpi character so this is a blueprint interface um that we did in episode one we can get our function call it base rotation on on off and we can add a input lever ball and call it on and then we can go back to our tile from other actor call base rotation on off message tick that we want it to be on and if we just duplicate that when it leaves we can tick that we want it off and don't forget to copy the other actor into the target as well sorry not copy drag and then if we go to our bp third person in our interfaces which we set up previously we can see this base rotation is on off and we can just get we can get character movement go base rotation where are you we can get ignore we can set ignore base rotation we can plug that in there plug that in there so now when we play it wobbles but our screen doesn't shake as violently at all if we disconnect that just so you can see the difference we just bypass that bypass that and you can see the difference that's quite a large wobble in that right hand corner just there so you can have that however you want you can have it on or off i like to have it set up just like so okay so the next bit that we want to do is we're going to create a variable so we're going to come down here create a variable and we're going to say can wobble now if it's the player and if can wobble is true so and here then we're going to wobble so we're just going to make can wobble instance editable so we select it we go to details go to instance editable and expose on spawn so make sure these two are clicked and then if we come out into the world we'll select this control d make it bigger and we will go and make sure that the first one can wobble and the second one can't so now what will happen we've got some wobble and then this one doesn't wobble wobble no wobble okay and like i said it remembers how long we've been stood on it so if we're stood on it for the five seconds it will break and if we only stood on it for one second then it will leave four seconds left what happens if you would like it to be quicker so we can do a set timeline node so we get wobble time so we do set timeline length no timeline length and we connect that to that and that to that and then we come out from the new length and promote it to a variable rename, rename this timeline length and then we can make this instance editable and expose on spawn as well 
So then if I come here, change the details here to 10. And click play. This one I'll take 10 seconds. And get increasingly more violent to collapse. As you can see, just like that. And that is the basic setup of a collapsing bridge. Now, there are some other things that we can do. So we can put a death volume underneath it, like this one, so that when it falls, we die. Just like that. We can add a sound. So we can... So we want to spawn sound at location and we plug in get active location to there and promote that to a variable call it a bridge break sound and then on stop wobble we get bridge break sound and stop so when we enter and when we leave the sound will start and then it will stop as well. And then we can also do a play sound at location when the bridge breaks. Yeah, to location and play the sound. And we can also do spawn emitter at location as well. Uh, and this will spawn a nice little dust particle effect or kind of a break effect if you want. And that is it. All sorted. Super easy. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. I can't wait to see what you come up with it. And thank you very much.